Hello. Welcome to Payroll Liability Adjustments in QuickBooks. My name is Pat Hartley. I'm the owner-operator of Accounting on the Go. I'm a small business accounting consultant. I'm an advanced certified QuickBooks Pro Advisor. I'm an associate accounting instructor here at some local colleges in Southern California. And today we're here to talk about how to adjust your payroll tax liabilities in QuickBooks. I've got a sample company open here. I've got Rock House of Construction, our favorite demonstration company. And we're going to examine some opportunities in adjusting our payroll tax liabilities and why they would come about and how to make them. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up your payroll summary report in QuickBooks. So we're going to go up here to report, employees and payroll, payroll summary report. I'm going to extend this report to include December the 31st of 2015. So we have the entire quarter. And I'm going to refresh that screen. And so now we've got our whole quarter. And I'm going to pick on Greg Schneider here. And for Greg Schneider, we notice that his unemployment tax liability that we accrued for the company is understated by $50. Um, in, the first, in the first part of the quarter, we forgot to include him in this unemployment taxes, so we under accrued him by $50. So we need to increase our expense and increase our liability for Greg Schneider in this last quarter of the year. So let's see how we're going to do that. I'm going to go up here to Employees drop-down menu and go to Payroll Taxes and Liabilities and adjust my payroll liability. And we get this terrific screen. And things are really date sensitive in QuickBooks. Remember that. So the first date is the date we want to make the adjustment. So do we want to make it December the 31st, December the 15th? What date do we want to make the adjustment? I'm going to go ahead and leave it um, at December the 31st of 2015. Be real sensitive there because that's going to default the, to whatever your current date is. Then the effective date is the date that you want it to affect your liability balance. Because you know in your 941, if we were making a 941 adjustment, you have to put your liabilities for the quarter on that Schedule B. So you might want to have that this date be October. In our case, it's going to be October the 31st, 2015. And we want to make our adjustment for the employee, not for the company, for the employee. So we're going to go ahead and select that radio button and then select our employee, Greg Schneider, that we're going to pick on today. And so down here in the body of the window, we identify which payroll item it is we want to affect. And it's going to be his unemployment taxes. And we want to increase the unemployment expense and the unemployment liability by $50 because we just under accrued it. We just kind of messed that up. And so we're going to go over here and tab and over in the memo, you can type in why you're making the adjustment. And so now to see what happens, to see how our expenses get increased and our liabilities get increased as, as well, we're going to go over here to Accounts Affected button on the right-hand side here. And we have some choices. We can choose not to affect the account or to affect both the liability and the expense account. And that's what we want to choose. We want to choose that one. So we're going to say OK. And then we're going to OK again here, and that's going to record the journal entry. And now you can see now on our payroll summary report, we've got a $50 increase in our payroll expenses for our unemployment taxes for Greg Schneider. If we drill down on that $150 and get the detail, we see that the liability adjustment here is a journal entry for $50. We can drill down on that and go back to the screen we were just at. And to see the journal entry behind the scenes of this screen, we can use our control Y keys simultaneously, and then we can see that our expense has been increased and our liability has been increased as well, with exactly the effect we wanted. I'm going to go ahead and escape out of here and escape out of my adjustment screen as well, and of my detail. So let's see what happens now. If we want to pay our liabilities now, what it's going to look like. We've increased our liabilities here and our expenses here. What's it going to look like in our pay liabilities screen. Let's go back up to employees 
pay, pay, payroll taxes and liabilities, pay our scheduled liabilities. And here we'll see that our California unemployment and training tax has been is $160. Well, let's see what that is. Let's just view and pay this tax. And we can see that now our unemployment liability was, is getting paid at $150, which is exactly the amount of our liability and what we owed. So that's how that got affected by making that adjustment to your payroll taxes. I'm not going to record this because I want to make another adjustment. I'm going to go ahead and escape out of here. When we're doing our, our Form DE-9 here in California, our quarterly unemployment tax return, we discover that in rounding, we under accrued another 17 cents, let's just say. So we want to increase this $150 by 17 cents. So another opportunity for us to adjust our taxes, we're going to go up here to employees, payroll taxes and liabilities, adjust the payroll tax liabilities the same place we were a minute ago. And we want to make our date December the 31st again. But this time it's going to be adjusted for the company. It's not employee specific. It's just a rounding difference that, that we have because when we calculate each employee separately by payroll, it comes up with a different value than taking the whole of our employees and multiplying it times the, times the rate. So we're going to tab down to the lower portion of the window and select the same item, our California unemployment insurance. We want to increase that by 17 cents. So we're putting 17 cents. Due to rounding, if you had, just, if you had under accrued, I mean if you had over accrued, by 17 cents, you would put a negative 17. And then your memo there, you could put rounding. And you have another choice here. You can select accounts affected. And you can choose not to affect the account, not to increase your expense, and not to increase your liability. Or you can choose to affect them both. So we're going to go ahead and select affect them both again, because you really do want to affect our liabilities and our expenses by the 17 cents. And say OK. And Say OK here, which will record the journal entry. Now notice that Greg Schneider's expenses did not change. We didn't do anything to Greg. All we did was increase our company-wide liabilities and our company-wide expenses. Let's go now and look at the payroll tax amount that we would pay in our pay taxes. We're going to go up to employees, payroll taxes and liabilities, pay your scheduled liabilities, and now you'll find that we're going to pay that $160.17 because what happened was QuickBooks actually increased the liability in total and increased the expense so we would pay the additional $0.17. Cents. So I hope that was helpful. In a nutshell, a very small nutshell, we learned how to adjust your payroll tax liability. I hope, I hope you found that useful and helpful in the brief time that we had together. Thank you very much for attending. Bye-bye.